All right, y'all, what's happening? It's me, David Griffin. If you're here for the first time, make sure you hit that like and subscribe button. Let's make this channel move, y'all. Look at this. We talking about the GH5S raw output using the Atomos Ninja 5. Well, I'm gonna go ahead and tell you, you see my animal right here? Disgusting looking, you know? Disgusting canvate mutated cage, Ninja V. I'm, I'm shooting ProRes, I'm using a 12 to 35 2.8 ND filters. Why would I do all this? I even using, I'm even using an Aniso battery pack on here so I can get bigger batteries at Sony NPF for long battery life. Look how disgusting this looks. But let me tell you something, for this being related to the GH5 in nearly every way, except no IBIS, 10 megapixels instead of 20, better video features, and it's definitely a low light beast. I'm gonna tell you, now that we can do ProRes RAW on this machine, it is a machine to be reckoned with, y'all. I'm telling you, it's not a slouch. It's worth it. Yeah, it's worth it. But yes, it's overpriced up to an extent, but it just depends on how easy you, easy you want your move into shooting RAW and having an all around completely built system. Yeah, the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema may be better. It may be, and it's cheaper. But before we get going, let's deal with the elephant in the room. DaVinci Resolve 17 does not work with ProRes RAW natively. You're gonna have to transcode those files using Adobe Premiere, Final Cut Pro, or Assimilate. I used Assimilate Play, Play Pro. I'm gonna show you how to do that before we get going, but look here. Dim Black Magic Design. Stop being a sucker and either get B-Raw native in every camera or work out a license deal with Apple for ProRes RAW support. Signed, everybody. Now, using Assimilate Play Pro, you go ahead and open it up. This is what it looks like. Real disgusting interface in my opinion. You hit the import button. You navigate to the folder where your files are. You're not gonna see individual files because it pulls in every file in that folder. You let them import and you drag all across till you find them. See, these a lot of these are shots from uh, my previous project. Still on the um, ProRes, uh, in ProRes on my SSD drive. That's the one good thing about an SSD drive that the Atomos can use. So what you do is you select all of your files that you're not using, you delete those slots, and then you hit delete to get rid of those files. You don't even have to delete the slots, you can just hit delete on the uh, files in Play Pro. I'm only using Play Pro to convert them from ProRes RAW into ProRes HQ. I don't even have to use HQ. Why do I do that instead of just using a, one of those other programs natively? Because ProRes HQ has almost the same amount of complete latitude as using a raw file, almost, not exactly, but very close. 444 is even better, but I, I can't see any perceptible difference. So you hit the render in Assimilate Play Pro, you find, you set up your settings here. And I'm using, as you can see, HQ. I don't need HQ, but I'm using it, it's fine. I've done things in 10-bit 422 and it's fine. Remember, we're coming from a 12-bit raw file. Then you change your output file name. And when you look up top higher where it says custom, you see the width and height. That shows that these raw files are 4K, 23.976 frames a second, and it can shoot with the GH5S up to 60 frames, see? So, I accidentally hit the browse back here. Sorry about that. Now let me get on out of here. Get back to my same area. I'm just making sure I select it to, to render out each of my files of my selected shots. See, let's go on up here, selected shots. Hit OK. Now that's gonna render, but let's fast forward out of that render. Let me just get right to it. I didn't adjust anything because you do have color options, but I skipped that part. I didn't even use that because I use Resolve to color it. But let's see the final product. See, this is ProRes RAW. Boom, look at that latitude. Look at that skin. I'm sorry. A lot of you guys say Canon only, but I'm just saying, I like what Panasonic is doing with their colors when you get access to everything. Look at those blacks, rich blacks. Origin, color, look at that. Yeah, you know, people say it's just a flat image and you move, but you know, look at how much you can get out of it. I'm getting tons out of this. Very simple, very easy. I got plenty to see. I got lots of highlights, lots of shadows. Look at that. Look how much I brought back from that gray saturated log file. Now, let's get out of there. Let's keep it moving. Look at these images. Mm-hmm. Look at that. Nice. Rich color. Yes, yeah, the same area, but we're looking at highlights 
shadows and it's retaining yes the gh5s has only 12 they say 12.5 stops in dynamic range but it feels like it's punching at its weight right now see there we got it we finally blew it out we're almost looking right at the sun right there but of course it's supposed to blow out yes i believe the black magic pocket cinema camera has better highlight roll off much better but look what you're getting out of a camera that you, a lot of people already have and on the used market it's going to be just going like hotcakes for that if the smart man looks up and says wait a minute i can get almost a ready setup camera look right here look at my car dirty as i don't know what but look i'm getting real rich blacks right there now let's take a look at my son here see hmm what are you thinking when you see that um, um, it's retaining it's holding we are holding our highlights down we're not blowing out and we got good exposure on them. yes I even had enough latitude to bring his exposure up did I do it no could I do it yes I could now let's take a look we got dark subject bright background and we are retaining I'm telling you, it's, it's, it's a lot. It's really good when you can do something like this. It helps you not have to worry. I'm using an ND filter, GH5S, Atomos Ninja V, ProRes Raw. I'm using a six stop ND filter. I'm dragging those, bringing those highlights down. And for the most part, I shoot two to one and a half to two F stops over what the meter camera's meter says. Other times I use waveforms, but for this, I just use the meter. And this is what I get. I got really good retention of highlights. Just saying, the imagery is beautiful on this camera, you guys. Now, this is H.264 MP4. This is not raw. Notice how crushed it looks. Look up there. Look at that cloud. It's gone. Let's go back to some ProRes. See the difference? It's just it's squeezing it down, holding it. It's not blowing it out. It's beautiful. So let's go ahead and summarize. Is the GH5S a good camera? Yes, but what is it with the Atomos Ninja V when you have access to ProRes RAW? It's a little monster. It's about the equivalent, in my opinion, to an Ursa Mini 4.6K or no, more like an Ursa Mini 4, the 4, 4K. An excellent camera. It can work, you guys. Don't count it out. Look. Let me walk you through some of the, of what I did in Resolve 17 Studio, just kind of to help you out, give you a starting point. Now, remember, I'm not a color expert, but I just got my own kind of routine. But remember, before we get there, hit that subscribe button, y'all. Let's go ahead and, like I said, let's make this channel move. Let's check it out. Now, after we've transcoded our footage, we bring it into Resolve here, and we're looking at, we're just going to touch, touch around with one shot. As you can see, you start with your edit page and move over to your color page here and you got your lift gamma gain down there. So first thing I like to do is make a, another node. Now, usually you hit Alt S. I don't know what it is on a Mac. I'm sorry, guys, I'm on a PC. That's why I'm not using Final Cut Pro. Otherwise, if I was on a, uh, a Mac, I'd be using Final Cut Pro and Resolve. But okay, I get another node built, built and look at this, a LUT already built by Panasonic. That's the V-Log to rec 709 is pretty much really close to like done right there look at that you can find that right on panasonic site free of charge it does a lot of the work for you so those of you who are using it you get it you get, get resolved you drag or some other program you drag and drop it on and your footage is close look at my at the bottom right my parade right there see that we're not blown out we still got headroom on all this stuff so the first thing I generally do after that is I name my nodes. The first node, that'll be my LUT. I, you know, name it VLOG or uh, Rec 709 or whatever I'm gonna name it. So I know my origin, my starting point, because I want all the color work I do to come after whatever color space I put everything into. So now all, you know, you could get away with murder, which is what I'm gonna do, is do the rest on just one node. Of course, that's not what you do but I'm just gonna do it because I know I could get away with something usable here. Now you lift gamma and gain. That's really from left to right, 
shadow mid-tone highlights. Now, if you click over here, shadow mid-tone highlights, you notice they're in the exact same place and resolve. That's because they represent the same thing. They just work at different value ranges. So just messing around, look over on my parades here. See, when I touch the shadow, it just pulls the bottom down. You don't want to cross that zero line, whatever you do. You really don't. I'm just doing whatever I feel like doing right now. So highlights, I'm crushing them. I mean, bringing them, compressing them down. You know, you got latitude. Go ahead and touch the shadows a little bit. Let me get those shadows up. And I did it from the lift gamma gain, which is the same thing, just a different value of it. So as you can see, it's very close to what a lot of people would say. Oh, that looks good. Yeah, I could. I could I could cheat and just give up hope and start there. But this is very close to just out of camera. Throw on that LUT, the uh, V-Log LUT to 709 and go. Here I'm going to go ahead and wiggle the uh, temperature a little bit for us. And even though this is not the same as doing using the raw file itself, which is a big advantage because there's no image degradation when you use that from that I know of. So in this case, this is not changing any of the color balance, as in temperature, sorry, color temperature. So when I look at the image, I'm looking at the grass now. The greens in that grass, not digging it. I'm just looking at what we got. So I right click that to get it back to normal. And then I hit the Y to bring everything back. So I'm adjusting everything at once and not just that. So, but I really wanna go here our color warper so I'm selecting our greens this is what I know is green look at the grass see what's happening we're getting more saturation in. now this is a 12-bit file guess what it, it has the latitude to change the colors pretty far you notice in that color that color spider uh, spider web when I put the mouse over the screen it shows a plus sign it shows what's affecting what but it takes a lot more to break your footage coming out of RAW. It's no longer a RAW file, it's a ProRes file, and it saves it out as a, a V-Log V-Gamut file when I converted it using Assimilate. So as you can see, I'm just giving the greens a little more green, a little more lushness to them. Out here in Austin, Texas, that heat is good. It's not playing games with the uh, grass. But we've been getting a whole lot of crazy rain, so <laughs> it's nice. But add a little bit to it. Now you notice the color now, it didn't affect anything else. There's a lot of data there. See? Just moving our color warper over a little bit, those selections. It affects that color. Now you notice that white area inside? That's showing what's what I'm deal, doing, dealing with. Let me just wiggle it around, let you see. See that? Lots of latitude in this file. You can only get something like that shooting out of raw. Yeah, see? And now I'm touching the skies because I want to affect the blue. So I went over to that section. Now, you notice when I move the cursor over the window, notice what happens over that spider. You see that? Look in there, the color warper. That shows what that affects. Now, let's get out of there. Now, let's get the, the color that's invading the shadows. I got some blues jumping into those shadows. What we want to do is deal with the illuminance versus the saturation. Right now, I'm in the sat versus bloom. That's sat versus sat. There we go. Saturation versus luminance. Click here. Drag this down. Notice the blues. Notice though that that car. See that? Yeah, I'm gonna lose a, a little bit of brightness in the red right there. But look at the car tone. It's black again now. See? See? We took that excess color bleeding out of there. That color bleeding came in there because we. Dealt, dealt with the white balance and then we brought it back and then we wiggled some blues to deal with the sky so it's what we do with the sky so let's just say I'm done and that's about close to it see what we got going on now let's go on over here and let's let's take a look at 
these clouds. So with her imagery, let's just say that would be good enough. Let's check out another section. So in this case, let me go ahead and I'm just clicking on, I'm using my mouse wheel and I'm dropping the same color grading, the same color changes onto other clips. And I'm just taking a look, seeing if anything is blown. You make an adjustment. Look at this. Let me just click in and see if it works. Ah, pretty close. I see a little bleeding in there on the color, but I don't think it's the end of the world. So let's take a good look at that. Look at that. Look at the color. See? Now you see that? You see the blues in the shadows? My car is supposed to be black. Let's bring that down. Now, let's drop our actual um, lift, which is our shadows. Let's bring them down some more. Of course, we're affecting the whole image, but I'm okay with that. See that? Now we're pretty much at a black car again. My windows have a tint on them, and that's the bluish of the tint because it's not a perfect ND filter they use on the car. But I mean, why can I not like that? See? back out of there so now let's play around with the white balance yeah I'm good with it click in there hit zero again yeah I think I like this back to zero to be honest with you now let's go on to another clip we're clicking on my son another look See this? Of course, I would change that because he's too dark and he's too deadish, his skin tones. I'm not a fan of the skin tones I'm seeing here. So take a good look. So I'll go ahead and make these adjustments just because, just to show you the flexibility of starting with a raw workflow. So I'll just go ahead and knock this out. It's a lot of latitude in here, you see? A lot of latitude. Move that hue. I'm a fan of moving the hue just a little bit to the negative. Mm -hmm. Definitely got to bring some saturation back to those guys. I don't want to saturate it all too much. Just a little bit more. Watching my skin tones. I know my kids, so let me bring it back to zero. See? Tell you what, let me speed this up for you. And there we go. See that? We in here doing it, y'all. ProRes RAW, the Panasonic GH5S. Is it worthy? Yes, it is. Should you look at it, consider it if you got a GH5S. Yes, you should. If you got really bright brights, hopefully you got your neutral density filter on there on your lens, go ahead and fire up that ProRes RAW and you should be good to go. Or at least you should have a lot of help because it's like having an Ursa Mini, y'all. But look here, that's it. Thanks for watching. I got more coming soon, y'all. I'm David Griffin. I'm out. Hit that subscribe, y'all. All right, y'all. Peace.